Well, more than ever, I'm growing extremely discontent with any platitudes or narratives against Obama. And don't get me wrong, the guy is a piece of shit. I do consider his health care plan to be destructive, not in a liberal way, not in a neoconservative way, and not even in a libertarian way. However, I find that platitudes and sentiments against him are focusing it in an angle that is very slavish, that is very weak, and I don't like that. They make him out to be a tyrannical leader, some type of Sith Lord. I don't, I never got the original trilogy. I only saw the prequel trilogy to Star Wars, and that was from a young age, so it didn't stick to memories, my memories. I did like the Clone Wars, though. So. Those five minute cartoons were actually pretty creative. But anyway, they present him as a dictator. They compare Obama to Hitler. I consider that an insult to Hitler because I actually think that Hitler is. He went the wrong direction, but his principles are much better than what we have now. I keep in mind, he was in a, at a time of approaching modernism. Thirty years after his death, we had the 1970s. And as bad as 2010 is, we're only just re-approaching that level of degeneracy. Once we finally get the exploitation era of films, books, and that kind of narrative that tackles on questions way beyond their reach in a especially twisted left-wing narrative. That's when we should be worried, because then the next reaction will have to be a superb one. Because of that, the 80s kind of always reminded me of the 50s, both in terms of media renaissance, technology, the culture, and just the fact that it was kind of an artificial break from that. But going on to the main subject, Obama is a petty leader. It's hard to imagine him as the leader of the free world considering the fact that what we're focusing on most is the fact that he's responsible for the death and suffering of brown foreigners. Uh, one of those drone strikes killed an American citizen that was it kind of looked like an Obama, too. He was kind of a mulatto guy with a stupid hairstyle, but that that's what we really are stressed on, and his health care proposals, and a couple of other things. I mean, the economy is a shithole, and he just appointed a Jewish Democrat from New York City who happens to be a really short female. Not that that would matter per se as the leader of the Federal Reserve and a lot of his policies do seem heavily Keynesian but now I'm heading to libertarian territory when I'm making those critiques. The stimulus package that was a failure I mean I'm definitely not getting any benefits from it and this shutdown thing was absolutely ridiculous, but it doesn't affect me. I don't have job problems because I don't have a job. And I ain't even bitter about that. Now, my folks might be bitter about that, but I don't know. And 
there's not much I can do besides what I'm already doing now times three. And that con honestly disturbs me most of all. Our biggest threats aren't these intimidating massive people or these mythical representations of pure evil. Now indirectly it might be, but for the most part, what we're dealing with happens to be petty. Think about the standard liberal. Who does he view as the symbol of evil? Hitler. And Hitler was the forefront of the Third Reich. The German Empire returning to get its revenge after the result of World War One. A very menacing symbol of Nazism. This Aryan mythology is compilation of occultism and other traditional German ideas and economic viewpoints that did make them a threat that put them on the map again. Now that's a big deal. It's the American Revolution, what was that against? The British Empire. One of the most overrated empires, but nonetheless what you think of in terms of size and scope as gargantuan. In leftist narrative, that's kind of why they're winning. Because they're defeating the strong all the time. <clears throat> that's why they can perceive something like the Tea Party as being intimidating when it's not. Because they painted, they found the little strengths here and there, and they kill it. That's what they do. They kill anything that's good, anything that's powerful. They manage to deconstruct the Vatican and make it go from the longest lasting institution that has honestly been involved in a couple wars that have lasted a long time and they, they've turned this strong institution, this creator of a lot of West, the West Magnum Opus, I guess. That is the West Magnum Opus. That is a defining work in many ways. And they took that thing and they deconstructed it as being something petty, but they don't forget the fact that this is a very strong institution. It's linked with a lot of scary stuff, right? You think of the Illuminati, you think of a lot of bad guys in fictional works are kind of dressed like Vatican leaders. They have a lot of those designs. They have a lot of Masonic designs, too. Of course, because Masons took that shit over. But that's what you picture. You picture something that's intimidating, an intimidating past. Left makes its opponents look way more interesting than they actually are. And part of it is because the left isn't interesting at all. So when Obama is too right wing for us, that deeply disturbs me. And his sentiments are getting too weak and too sheepish for me to be able to handle it anymore. It's time we grew some balls. As a people. And if you disagree, then you're not the people. And I'm sorry to say that. No, I'm fucking not sorry to say that. Fuck you. Too many weaklings that aren't ready to defend something 
that's a part of them that has defined the essence of their soul whether or not they even know it and maybe it's because it has no place in their soul and therefore your soul is irrelevant this is dead weight or it's a complete detriment and when someone like Obama his, the sentiments against him paint him out to be this guy that's using that's engaging in mass genocide and killing a bunch of brown people and things of this nature they're, they're really not getting the full message and the full message is that Obama is proof that even black people, even white people, even people that are both, they can all be good boys. They could be middlemen for conservative Jewish movements. And they, while they're doing that, also in favor of stuff like gay marriage, heavy liberalism, and the destruction of the Western soul. And the West itself. That you can be both <laughs> those poisons at the same time and still be a, an irrelevant puppet that isn't necessarily pulling the strings. See, that's what we're dealing with. And I'm not a big fan of it. This is Mr. Walker 7. I did this all in one take. I'll be sure to tweet what I think of in a Monday Night Raw since that's gonna be in three hours or something. If I'm awake then since I woke up in 3 a.m. today so my sleep pattern goes off during Wednesdays and it comes back for Monday because I really want to see wrestling even if it means tiring myself out Again, the second time, this is Mr. Wonka 7, and I hope you guys are having a great night. I'm not going to give both those catchphrases because it ruined the fun. Hopefully, no one here is as bitter as I am about half these issues. Hopefully, you've found something in the fray, something in the road that I haven't glimpsed yet, that I haven't caught my eyes on, that's keeping you somewhat grounded. I consider myself grounded in how I'm being annoyed with all this weakness, with all this shallowness, and with all this sophomoric anger and passion. Without the intellectual basis for the future. Yet, yeah, that discontentment should probably go even deeper and deeper until I reach something that is of value and that can give me the strength and wisdom to make sense of all of this and to actually plan something for the future. Because that's my issue. Not a lot of knowledge on which path to take or if there is a path to take.